So in our next section, we're going to talk about integrating Spark streaming with some real-world systems out there that you might need to consume data from. So far in this course, we've been listening to Twitter streams and listening to arbitrary data sent over a TCP port. That's all well and good for learning, but in the real world, you'll probably be listening to data sources that are coming from some other system. And one such popular data source is called Apache Kafka. So let's talk about that first. Usually when people ask me about, you know, what should I cover in my courses, Kafka comes up. So I think it's pretty widely used these days, and it's uh, with good reason. It's a very scalable and robust system. What is it? It builds itself as a high-throughput distributed messaging system. So basically it's a publish-subscribe system where Kafka can publish out messages received from, you know, a bunch of different message producers, and consumers of those messages can subscribe to given topics to actually listen for those messages. So one example would be broadcasting weblogs that are dropped into you know, Apache access log directories, for example. But it's more general than that. You can actually use it for messaging with anything. And you know, publish subscribe is actually kind of fraught with peril. I mean, it's pretty easy to bring down a network with all the packets this sort of a thing can generate, but it seems like Apache Kafka has actually figured it out and gotten it right. It is fast, scalable, durable, and distributed, and based on its wide adoption, I think it lives up to those promises pretty well. So it's a good, reliable way to send data over a cluster of computers. So if you have you know, a cluster of computers generating a lot of information and another cluster of computers that want to receive that information, for example, a Spark streaming cluster, Apache Key Kafka can sit in, the sit in the middle and broker those transactions. So this is what it looks like graphically. Basically, with Kafka, you set up what are called topics that are a given type of message that people can produce and people can consume. So, for example, a producer might be an individual web host, a web server, and that might be publishing topics of log data. And then I can have consumers, for example, my Spark streaming job that listens to the topic for logs and consumes that data in a reliable manner. So Kafka just makes sure all the messages get to where they need to go one way or another. And the great thing is that, as of Spark 1.3, Spark streaming can do this in a very reliable manner. It used to be that it had to connect to the Zookeeper host that actually sat on top of Kafka, and you know there were a lot of rooms for, room for things to go wrong and for messages to get, to get lost. But today, Spark streaming can connect directly to a Kafka server, and that way it can actually go back and request information it might have missed if something went wrong. It's a much more reliable mechanism that way, and there's just one less, uh, one less person in the middle that way. So that's what we recommend doing, and that's what we're going to show you in this example. Now, if you're actually going to use Spark Streaming with Kafka, uh, that doesn't come included out of the box with Spark. So you will have to go and download the latest Spark Streaming Kafka package from Maven or whatever your favorite package repository is, and throw that into your Spark lib folder and import that in as an additional external jar file for your project. Later on, when we talk about actually deploying real-world applications, we'll talk about using a tool called SBT, that can manage those sorts of library dependencies for you automatically. And when you're actually doing stuff in production, that's probably how you do it, but that's the next section. Well, two sections from now. So how does it work? The code itself is actually very simple once you have that library installed. So all you need to do is set up some parameters that give it a list of the various uh, Kafka servers that you want to listen to. So in our example here, we're going to set up a single Kafka server that's going to be broadcasting on my own PC on port 9092. So you just need to set up a map of all those, all those Kafka brokers and where, where Spark Streaming can find them. Finally, you need to give it a list of topics that you want to listen to, and you can listen to more than one if you want to. But in our example, we're just going to listen to something called Test Logs, which is a topic that we're going to broadcast our Apache access log data on. And you can listen to, like I said, more than one topic if you want to. And the way that works is that when you actually create your Kafka stream, what we will receive are these tuples, these key data pairs where the key is the topic name and the value is the actual information that's coming in on that topic. So you can use that to differentiate messages from different topics at runtime. So to actually create that stream, it's very simple. You just use the Kafka utils object. That's part of the, uh, the package that we imported into our libraries. And once you do that, all you have to do is call dot map to the underscore two if all you want to do is extract the actual messages themselves. So since we're only listening to a single topic, we can just discard that topic name that's in the first element of the tuple and just extract the actual messages themselves by mapping them to just extract the dot two element of the tuple. So let's see it in action. Now I doubt you have a Kafka cluster sitting around on your local network, but 
I actually went and set one up on Windows for me. So um, I can actually show you this working in the real world. And I thought that was worth doing because Kafka is such a popular technology these days. So let's go actually stream some data and listen to Kafka for it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, look at some code here that actually consumes information from Kafka. I've got to let you off the hook here a little bit and not make you actually load this yourself and run it because, like I said, you probably don't have a Kafka server handy. So you can just sit back and relax and watch me do it for once. Anyway, if you do want to set up your own Kafka server to play along with, though, you're welcome to do so. There's, some, uh, there's a URL here that gives you some instructions on how to set up your own little Kafka server on Windows, and it's actually not that hard. There are several steps involved, but they're all pretty straightforward. But diving into the code, so what we're going to do is set up a very simple example here that uh, takes our old example of looking at the top URLs from an Apache access log. Remember our very first clickstream example that we did? But we're going to modify it so that instead of listening to a TCP port for a bunch of information, we're going to get that log data through Kafka. So we start off like we usually do, import all the stuff we need, including the Kafka package that we need. So we need these two classes to be imported as well, Org Apache Spark Streaming Kafka and Kafka Serializer String Decoder. And again, remember we had to download the Kafka library for Spark and actually install that into Spark's library file and import it into this project for it to work. So we create an object called Kafka example, we define its main function and we create a streaming context just like we would with anything else. There's nothing different so far. Set up our logging and we set up a, a log pattern, a regular expression to actually extract the fields we want from the Apache access log data. So far, nothing different, but now we're going to actually set things up for Kafka. So first thing we have to do is set up this map of Kafka broker hosts and where they can be found. So I'm running a single broker on my local host on my own machine here that I'm running on, on port 9092. And if you had more than one, you would have to create more than one entry there. Now you can see that this is a little bit more fragile than the old school way of connecting to Kafka with Spark Streaming, which went through a single Zookeeper host. So it used to be you could just connect to the Zookeeper host, everything would flow through Zookeeper, and Zookeeper would worry about what the actual servers are. So, you know, the, the trade-off of the additional reliability that you get by doing, a, by doing a direct connection to the Kafka servers is that you need to maintain this list of individual servers yourself if things move around or go to different hosts or go to different ports, you're going to have to change your script to take that into account. So a little bit more maintenance there, but the reliability that you gain is well worth it. Next, we create a list of all the topics that we want to listen to. We're only going to be broadcasting our Apache access logs on a single topic that we're going to call test logs. And it actually expects that in a set data structure, which isn't something we've talked about before with Scala, but it is just another data structure like a list, but it's called a set, and you can just call to set to convert a list to a set. And we'll set that to topics and pass that in in our next line, where we actually create the stream for Kafka. And we say create direct stream, meaning we're connecting directly to the Kafka servers. And here's some more uh, Scala syntax we haven't really encountered much before. When you call a function in Scala, you can actually provide an explicit list of the arguments that it expects here. So sometimes there's ambiguity as to what the types are that a function expects to have as input. And if you need to actually specify those as you do here, this is how you do it. So basically we're saying create direct stream is going to expect to be dealing with a type that includes a string, a string, basically, and a string decoder, and a string decoder. So this is telling Kafka that I'm basically processing string data. This is Apache access log data, and I'm using the string decoder to actually serialize that data. And by default, that's just what Kafka does, okay? So the actual parameters we pass in are the streaming context, the Kafka parameters, which is the list of servers that we're connecting to, and the list of topics, or more specifically, the set of topics that we want to listen for. Now, once we create this stream, it's going to listen to, it's going to basically subscribe to those topics that we specified. So it's going to go to Kafka and say, okay, tell me about everything that comes in on the test logs topic. And what it's going to give you back are these pairs that have topic name and then message. Now, in our case, we're only listening to a single topic, so there's not really any useful information in the topic. So we're just going to map this and extract only that second element of each tuple, which is the message itself. So what we've done in this line, we've created a direct connect stream to Kafka that listens to the test logs topic, extracts the message from that, and puts that into a new D stream called lines. So at this point, we're kind of where we were before with our um, 
with our Apache access log parser script, we now have a lines dstream that just contains every individual line of an Apache access log coming in on it, except this time we're connecting through Kafka instead of listening on a port. From there, the rest of the code is the same. So, you know, I'm not going to go through this again. We're just doing the exact same code from our previous example where we apply our regular expression to the incoming Apache access log lines. We extract the URLs from the request field and we look at a five minute sliding window to look at the top URLs for each five minutes. And we kick it off. So let's go and actually do it. Like I said, I actually set up a Kafka server already. So I already spun up a Zookeeper host. I spun up a Kafka server. So I've already set up a topic. If we look at my history here for test logs with, with Kafka. So with this command, I already created a test logs topic on my zoo, through my Zookeeper host. And the next thing I want to do is actually call Kafka console producer to actually set up a producer that pipes my access log through that topic to whoever's listening. But first we need to listen. So let's go ahead and run this script. Kick it off. And there we go. So it's sitting there listening, subscribing to that test logs topic. Let's actually generate that and kick that off. And we should see that come through. There it goes. So you can see that was pretty quick. It actually shoved that whole log through there all in one, one big chunk. And we have our results here already. So I can go ahead and hit terminate here. And sure enough, our, our hackers are attacking our site again. XML RPC is by far the most popular web request, followed by WP login, also from a hacker attack on this website, followed by the homepage. So there you have it. We just piped a ton of access log data through Kafka on my local machine to Spark Streaming using this source code. And it works just fine. So you could scale this up to an entire cluster and, you know, Kafka makes sure that it can actually ha handle that kind of a scale. So as long as you have enough hosts on your Spark streaming cluster to process that data and keep up with it, you should be okay. So there you have it, using Kafka to actually process massive amounts of uh, published subscribe messages in real time. Pretty cool stuff. Let's move on.